Today we're going to start talking about forces. So a force is a vector quantity that will act on an object and causes it to move or deform. For example, if you have a soccer player and they kick a soccer ball and send it moving along the ground, there was a force that was applied to the ball in order to cause it to move. Similarly, if you were to take a box and then you were to put it on the ground and step on it, you're causing the box to deform because you have your force being applied to the top of the box and of course there is the ground so the box can't move down so you're causing the box to deform. Now when we say that they're a vector quantity we mean that direction matters. So sometimes you're going to have a force at an angle, theta, and then you're going to have to break it up into its x and y components. And sometimes you're going to have negative values for your forces. And that is okay. We expect that since these are vectors. In this course, we're going to be talking about four main forces. We're going to talk about the gravitational force. We're going to talk about the normal force. We will talk about the force of friction. And we will talk about the force related to tension. Now, there are other forces out there. But in this class, we'll only talk about these specific four. So let's take a moment and look at our gravitational force. There are two formulas that we're going to be using when we talk about gravitational force. The first one is related to two bodies and it's based on their mutual attraction. That's basically what gravitational force is. is you have two bodies. For instance, we have our moon and we have the earth and there is a mutual attraction between the two based on their mass. So this is mass two, this is mass one. So it's based on their mass. Now the formula is the force of gravity is equal to the gravitational constant where G, I'm gonna write it up here, capital G is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newtons meter squared over kilogram squared. So this is a constant, so you need to remember this. So your gravitational force is equal to your gravitational constant times your first mass times the second mass. Now this formula also requires us to square the distance between the two objects. So the distance between the two objects is called r. And depending on how close or how far our two objects are from each other, the gravitational force will change. So you can imagine that the Earth has a greater gravitational force of attraction to the Moon than, say, to Mars because of the distance. The second uh, formula that we will be using is when we're looking at objects or people on the surface of the Earth or on the moon. So we're looking at smaller objects and the distance is not very big. It's negligible between the center of the earth and the object that we're looking at. So in this case, our force of gravity has been simplified. So we would only take the mass of our uh, object and we would multiply it by the gravitational acceleration where the gravitational acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So this formula is most often used for finding the gravitational force of attraction between large bodies. And then this force of gravity 
formula is used to find the gravitational force of an object on the surface of a planet. So let's take a look at an example using this formula here. So let's say that we have um, two planets and I'm just going to give them arbitrary sizes. So mass one is going to be, let's say, 5 times 10 to the 10, and then this mass 2 will be 3 times 10 to the 9. Now let's say that the distance between the two planets is 1.5 times 10 to the 7 meters, and these are in kilograms, and we want to find the force of gravity between these two planets. So let's put this into our formula, 6 times 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times 5 times 10 to the 10 times 3 times 10 to the 9 all over 1.5 times 10 to the 7 squared. Now, when you put these numbers into your calculator, you have to make sure that you use your uh, proper function. So on my calculator, my button that I would use is uh, 10 with a little x in the top right corner. Not all calculators will have this. You might have a calculator that says EXP or capital E. They're all the same thing. So make sure you use this button when you're putting in your scientific notation. So let's calculate the top first. So 6.67 times 10. Oh, 6.67 times 10 to the negative. 11, and make sure you put that in brackets, times 5, to, times 10 to the exponent of 10, times 3, times 10 to the exponent of 9. And this will give me about 1 times 10 to the 10. Now let's take the bottom number and square it. So make sure you put your brackets around because some calculators might not recognize it without it. So put those brackets 1.5 to times 10 to the exponent of 7 and then square that and that will give you 2.25 times 10 to the 14. Now finally we can do our division, so 1 times 10 to the 10 divided by 2.25 times 10 to the 14 and that will give you 4.4 times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. So, now let's take a look at an example of the other formula, which is Fg is equal to m times g, where little g, I will put it up here, equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Now this formula is also used to calculate the weight of something. So weight will equal the force of gravity. There's a difference between weight and mass. It is important that you don't mess those two up. Weight does not equal to mass. Mass is how much stuff exists in an object or a person and weight is the force acting on that person through gravitational means. So make sure you remember that. 
So let's say we wanted to calculate the weight of a five kilogram dog. So to do this, we're gonna use our formula here, five kilograms times negative 9.81 meters per second squared. The force of gravity or the weight of this dog should give you negative 49.05 newtons. So this question, if I phrased it, calculate the gravitational force of a five kilogram dog, you would be doing the same thing. So it's really important to remember that weight and the force of gravity are the same thing. Thank you for listening in and I'll see you next time.